All right, we're in chapter two now and number contemplation. So again, the best way to use these videos is to watch with your notebook, take notes, pause the video often, attempt problems with me, rewind, rewatch, pause, pause, pause. So in section 2.1, we're going to be talking about the pigeonhole principle. Understanding simple things deeply. So the question of the day that I'm going to ask you to pause and think about is how many ping pong balls would you need to fill your kitchen? So pause the video here, think about it, and then come on back. So as you did that, what were some methods that you could use to figure this out? What were some bad ideas? What might take forever? What if you um, did this or that? So pause the video if you still haven't thought about it, and then press play when you're ready to talk about it a little bit more, think about it. So it may be a bad idea to take a million ping pongs and try to fill it up. So you might want to have some methods on how you could say, all right, if I had this many and it was, um, it covered this much space, maybe I would put them in the corner. See how many ping pongs fit in a foot and then measure how many feet across and up and down. So we can kind of take these small spaces, right? A foot by a foot ping pongs and then measure across and up to see how many we would fill without actually having to count every single ping pong ball. So um, some collections are easy to count because there are so few of them. The number of schools in the Big Ten, which isn't 10. Number of handwritten letters you've written in the past year, my guess would be zero. Number of clean t-shirts left before laundry day, maybe another zero. Maybe you've got a lot. Some things are easy to count, but the number of ping pong balls to fill up your kitchen, probably not so easy. And that would be when we want to use estimation. So the number of grand, grains of sand in the desert, the number of stars in the sky, or the number of hairs on your roommate's body. So when we estimate, we can ask questions like, how many leaves are on a tree? How many blades of grass are there on a football field? How many cars would be needed to make a line bumper to bumper from New York City to San Francisco? We may not need to know these questions every day, but for our jobs, we might, and we also might just be curious. And it's interesting to think, well, how could we figure these out? And so we do something called quantification. We take these kinds of big things and we want to know the amount for one. So given a college cost, what is the cost of cutting one lecture in one class? You could figure that out. So we're going to do what's called the hairy body question. And this question is weird. And I'll just say that. And it comes from your textbook. And I encourage you to follow along. The question is this. Are there two non-bald people on the earth who have the exact, exact same number of hairs on their body? So pause here. Write down a prediction. What do you think? Do you think that there are two people on this earth who have the exact same number of hairs on their body? Maybe you don't know how many, but do you think that every single person walking around has a different number of hairs on their body? So go ahead, write down your prediction, and then let's see if we can actually answer this question. And to tell you what, we can. We can answer this question. Okay, so just like we talked about with the ping pong balls, instead of trying to figure out every inch of hair, let's think about a quarter by quarter inch of hair. So if we were to say, okay, a quarter by quarter inch is really small, that's about a hundred hairs. So about a hundred hairs. How did, all right, so that's what we were given. So a way to look at this, if we want to know how many per inch, so a quarter, one, two, three, one, two, three. So if this was one inch by one inch, then a quarter inch by a quarter inch would be this. This would be like a hundred. Okay, a hundred hairs and like a little quarter inch. So if we wanted to know a full square inch, which is an inch by an inch, it would be okay. It'd be like a hundred, a hundred, a hundred, a hundred, a hundred, a hundred. So we could say, okay, that's 400 by 400. That's about 1600 square, 1600 hairs. Now, maybe you're thinking, how could you possibly know that? There's got to be more. So let's just say, okay, fine. 1600 is what we think, but no person would have 16,000 hairs in any square inch. Can we agree on that? 16,000, that's a lot more. So if we can say, all right, that is a huge amount of hairs, we're going to assume 16,000 is too many hairs per square inch. And we're going to use that number. So the author is 72 inches tall and 32 inches wide. And we're just going to kind of say he looks like a cylinder to just make our life easier here. So what this is saying is that this cylinder is 72 inches tall and 32 inches wide. We'll even think about it more as like a rectangle. 
So if he's 72 by 32 inches, right, if we just think about him as like a, a rectangle there, 72 times 32, if we want the area, is 2,300 square inches, which is where they come up with that number. And then how do they come up with the number on his head? So let's see, the head, we're keeping him, he's a little square blob. If his head was 10 by 10, 10 inches by 10 inches, if you kind of think about your head, that's a little big, right? 10 inches by 10 inches, okay? And his feet, so that would be a 100 area. And his feet, we'll just say the same 10 by 10. That's probably too big, but okay, fine. We'll just say in every square inch is covered with hair, so that's another 100. So including the 200 from his head and his feet, let's say he's got about 2,500 square inches where he would have hair on his body. If we say 2,500 square inches, maybe you're thinking like, well, that's too small. It could be more. So let's go crazy. If he's got 25 square inches, no one would have 25,000 square inches of body hair or excuse me, of just square inches of body. So then if we say 25,000 is like really, really big, and we previously said 16,000 is way too many hairs, let's multiply those. And let's say 25,000 times 16,000. So this is, you know, the square inches of body, and this is the hairs. If we were to multiply those two numbers, we get 400 million. So what we're saying is there is no person on this planet who would have more than 400 million hairs because there's no person that has a body that is 25,000 square inches. That's massive. And no one's going to have 16,000 hairs on their body. So 400 million is the most amount of hairs. That There's nobody who would have more than 400 million hairs. So back to our question. Can there be two people on earth who have the exact same number of hairs on their body? Well, we said 400 million is the most amount of hairs. How many people are there? There are like 7 billion people. If someone can have at most 400 million hairs, if we had 400 million people, yeah, each person could, maybe one person has one hair, which isn't reasonable, but okay, fine. Then we could say, all right, there's exactly one amount of hair for one person, but seven billion. There's going to have to be repeats because there's only 400 million options. So we, if we had 400 million rooms, you could think about it this way, and seven billion people, could each person go to a different room? No, there would have to be overlap. There isn't enough rooms. And so we can actually say that, in fact, there must be at least two non-bald people on the earth who have the exact same number of body hairs. There's just not enough options. So how did we actually figure that out? We realized that there were more people on the planet than there are body hairs on any individual's body. And that is the pigeonhole principle that it, the, um, so they're showing you here, if you've got a like slots, envelope slots, and you have more envelopes than slots, then some are going to have to double up, right? That is the pigeonhole principle. The size of the collection, here we go. The size of the collection is larger than the number of possible variations. So why are there two trees with leaves on the earth with the exact same number of leaves? Well, because how many different leaves are possible? Are there more leaves than there are trees? Are there more amounts of leaves than there are trees? Why does every person have many temporal twins on earth? That is people who are born on the same day and will die on the same day. Well, how many days are there available for people? How many sets of days and how many people are there? So that is the pigeonhole principle. The size of the collection is greater than the possible variations. There are more trees than the possible leave amount. There are more people than days you could be born and days you could die. And so that is the pigeonhole principle. Understanding simple things deeply.